FOMO. My name is Patrick J. McGinnis, and I'm a FOMO Sapiens. And since you're here, I'm going to bet that you are too. And when you're like us and Monday comes around, you don't dread the new week. No, you wake up every Monday morning knowing that this week might just be the best one yet. This is Faux Monday, the snackable show that starts your week right with hot takes, life hacks, listener mail, and even some FOMO therapy. This is Faux Monday, the snackable companion to FOMO Sapiens, which will be back, of course, on Thursday with a full episode. But until then, happy Faux Monday, best day of the week. I'm your host, Patrick J. McGinnis, venture capitalist by day, author and podcaster by night, and FOMO Sapiens 24-7. Now, on Thursday, I have a very interesting guest, Catherine Fantazzi, who is the CEO and co-founder of Apollo Neuro. And what Apollo Neuro is, is this device that you wear around your wrist or you wear it around your ankle, and it emits these vibrations that actually have an effect on the central nervous system. And she'll get into the science. I'm not going to claim to understand all of how it works, but there's a ton of science behind it that has been proven in labs and published. And so they've come out with this product that I have been wearing around. And I will say, I mean, I think it's hard to know how these things work in a short period of time, but I do feel something. And in fact, I was talking to somebody whose family member uses it and they track all their sort of uh, vitals with an aura ring. And they said that they noticed that their resting heart rate had declined meaningfully over a period of time when using the product, which I thought was really interesting. Now, that is not me giving a scientific endorsement of the product. Please do not put that on me. But I've been trying it out. It's been very interesting. And what I love about the story of Catherine and her husband, who was her co-founder, is it's all about product founder fit. And if you remember on last week's Faux Mondays, we talked about Halik Tiley of Legacy and how he built that product founder fit, team product fit, which are so critical when you're running a business. Not just the, the fundraising part, which we talked about last week, you need to have that. It's really hard to raise money from people if you can't sort of prove to them you have some sort of unfair advantage that you're the best person to build this product. Of course, that's super valuable. But more than that, if you don't have product founder fit, it's just harder to run the business, get clients, get employees. People are going to look at you when they interview and say, why should I work for you? And if you don't have a good reason about why you're going to be successful, it's just a lot harder to get people to come on board. And so that's what I want to talk about. Now, I will give you a little preview of the origin story of the company because it's a, it's it's very sweet. Basically, you have Catherine, you know, is doing her own thing in life. She's working for a fund that helps to commercialize technology that's part of New York State. And she meets her future husband, Dr. David Rabin, who is an MD and a PhD and a board certified psychiatrist and neuroscientist. They fall in love. They get together. He's working on this potential solution to a bunch of different ailments, which turns into Neuro Apollo. She, having commercialized technology her whole career, sees it right away and says, listen, this is really interesting. Not sure how I can play in, but I'm happy to sort of just be an advisor, an unofficial advisor. And so she does. And then fast forward, she's now running the business side of the things. Her husband, David, is running all of the science sides of the things. They've raised more than $20 million in venture capital. It's a pretty good story. And so what I want to do today is just get into that a little bit, you know, why we care about this, what this is, how can you think about it if you're thinking about maybe starting a company or you want to go work for a company and you're trying to figure out like, is this person that wants to hire me somebody I should work for? Are they well positioned to succeed? So we'll get into all of that today on Faux Mondays. FOMO. FOMO. All right, let's get started. So what exactly is product founder fit? Well, I just sort of alluded to it a little bit, but it really is for me and in the way that I've read about it and thought about it, it's really saying this is, you're going to build something. Do you as a founder, number one, as I said before, have an unfair advantage, but really do you know the industry? Do you understand what it takes competition wise, what you need to build, how you're going to build it? What are the challenges? Like all of the 360 aspects of doing this thing, do you understand them? And the way that one achieves product founder fit is by working in the industry, working at a company that is, you know, sort of similar and then seeing some insight that, oh, you know, they're not doing this right. Let me go and do this. It's that kind of thing. So you just understand 
the industry, you can almost sort of prognosticate where it is going. And that may not just be one person, right? You know, it's very unusual for one person to just totally understand everything. But then they put together a team and they say, okay, well, you know, for example, say we are doing some sort of like restaurant business, right? And we're like, great, well, I understand, say I'm a chef and I understand how to make fast, casual Mexican food that's delicious. Well, great. I don't understand how to build out restaurants. So I find somebody who has experience in carpentry and so on and so forth. And, and that's what it's all about. Now, there is a counter argument to this that I have heard before which is, and I remember I was in Jordan, the country Jordan, at some event in Amman, and it was a really uh, cool night, uh, Endeavor Jordan, which is part of Endeavor Global, which is this wonderful organization that helps entrepreneurs to scale. They invited a ton of entrepreneurs, and I gave my little talk, and I talked about product founder fit. And a couple founders came up to me, and they said, Patrick, you know, we're doing this business in the dental space, dental care space, and we're not from the industry. And the fact of the matter is, us not, being from the industry allows us to be much more disruptive. We're not stuck in the same patterns of thinking. And, you know, I will give you that. Chances are they're going to do really well. And at times you can, in fact, come from a total outside perspective and win. But I would argue, and the data I think would, would agree with me, if you know something about the industry, your chances of succeeding are higher. Sort of the risk reward is more appropriate than being the pure disruptor where you may just absolutely kill it, but there are so many blind spots you have that the chances that you fail by doing something that you should have really known not to do, they're very high. And so it's just easier and your likelihood of success is higher. Now, how do you know if you have it, the product founder fit? I got seven things to think about. Number one, does the business feel like it's an extension of your CV or your resume, right? So if you're looking at starting a business and you had experience working in the industry or, or around the industry, or maybe you've advised companies in the industry and you can sort of say, okay, here's how I'm going to parse out the industry. Here are the threats, the opportunities, the trends I'm sort of going to try to build into that is a good sign. So, you know, it's pretty clear when you don't. And, and and we can talk about, we will talk about how to overcome that. But if you sort of naturally just have a knowledge, you have that little spidey sense about the industry and the business, then you know that you've got product founder fit. Number two, do you really understand the pain point of the customer, right? So if you have never spoken to a customer for the product that you're about to build and you don't really know what you're trying to solve for that customer, you do not have product founder fit. And so getting into that customer mindset, and you may have it from working, or you may have to do the research, but until you get there, what happens is you'll build a product that maybe you think is really great that has all these great features, but doesn't actually help anybody. And I had this experience early in my career. This was this was nuts. So when I just started out as a venture capitalist, this was the early 2000s, and we were investing in a bunch of companies. I was in Latin America, investing in a bunch of companies that were like copycats of American companies, you know, adapting these business models. So we did the Expedia of Latin America and the eBay of Latin America and the, you know, Yahoo of Latin America. And no matter which company we built, we always gave the user the opportunity to set up an email address. So at that company, right? So it'd be like, you know, Patrick at Expedia.com, Patrick at Yahoo.com. And the reality is that customers didn't need those from all companies. They didn't need it from a travel company or an auction company online. And so we spent all this time building things that nobody wanted because we didn't understand the customer. And so that's the kind of stuff you want to avoid because it costs time and money to do it and it gets you nothing. FOMO. FOMO. All right, number three, can you get suppliers who want to work with you? That right there. If you don't know who to call and you can't convince them, then you don't have product founder fit because you're going to need people. You always need suppliers. Like no man is an island or woman is an island. And so I've seen this over and over again. Actually, it's quite interesting what happens. A business starts, they don't really have the product founder fit. They start calling suppliers and suppliers are like, yeah, your idea doesn't really make sense to us. So we're not going to work with you because we don't think we're going to get paid. And you don't want to be there because then you basically, you're going to have to figure out an alternative way or do it yourself. And that's just, it's a lot of money and time that you don't want to spend. Number four, can you attract leading talent? Again, no man or woman is an island. You're going to need a team. And, you know, for example, say you're doing some sort of enterprise software, you're going to need salespeople. And salespeople, they know that if they can't sell 
they're not going to make any money. And if your product isn't something that they think can sell, they're not going to want to work for you. So if you can't find folks who want to sell your product or at least quality folks that want to sell your product, because you can probably find somebody who's not very good, that is a sign that you don't have the fit and you haven't figured out the right product and that you're too far and you need to do more work to figure out exactly you know, what you're building. Number five, do you know your competitors? I'm talking, do you actually talk to your competitors? It's interesting. Uh, I'm always shocked at how often, you know, we think competitors in business are just like enemies and they don't know each other and they're not gonna speak to each other. That is not the case. Competitors oftentimes are in touch. They have, you know, they're not best friends, but they they can call each other up and even, you know, at sometimes work together. Maybe they have issues with suppliers or common challenges. And, you know, it's not always just a war of attrition. And if you don't even know your competitors, then that means that you're not close enough to the industry to understand what exactly is happening in the dynamics. Number six, do you understand why you might fail? Do you see around corners and if you don't, you know, you're just not close enough to what you're trying to build. And, and so important because I'm always amazed when an entrepreneur sits down at a pitch and can tell you all the reasons they could potentially fail and then explain the mitigants. That, my friends, is a sign of a well-prepared entrepreneur. And number seven, obviously, this is the litmus test as well. Will investors back you? And I think about Elizabeth Holmes, right? She got all this money from people who did not understand her industry. She couldn't get a reputable investor to invest in her because they asked all the hard questions and she didn't know. She had no idea how to answer these things and it became very apparent to them that she didn't have the goods. And so she went to people who couldn't ask the hard questions and they gave her money and look what happened now. I mean, she has a nice TV show on Hulu, uh, but apart from that, there's no business to speak of and she's also been convicted of a crime. So what do you do if you don't have product founder fit? As I said before, nobody has everything, but you can have a strategy to acquire what you need. You can recruit people on your team. You can get a job in the industry. You can work on the industry as your 10% entrepreneur project. You can build expertise, experience, muscles that will make you better and more prepared to run a business in the space. So as a review, the seven things to think about. Number one, does this feel like an extension of your career before, your CV, your resume? Number two, do you truly get the pain points and the opportunity here at hand? Number three, can you get suppliers who want to work with you? Four, can you attract great talent? Five, do you know your competitors? Six, do you have a good sense of why you might fail? And number seven, will good investors, not just anybody, but good investors back you? All right, everybody, those are my thoughts on Product Founder Fit. I would love to hear from you. You can find me on email at letsconnect at patrickmcginnis.com on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis. We'll be here on Thursday with the story of Apollo Neuro. But until then, take care of yourselves, FOMO sapiens. FOMO. If you like today's show, please be sure to rate it and recommend it to your friends. And as always, you can find me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis, on Twitter at PJ McGinnis, and on the web at FOMOSapiens.com or PatrickMcGinnis.com, where you can get all kinds of free resources to live a more decisive and entrepreneurial life. FOMO. Want more FOMO Sapiens and FOMO Monday? Head over to FOMOSapiens.com where you can listen to past episodes, learn more about the show, and find out how to advertise. You can also connect with me on Instagram at Patrick J. McGinnis and on Twitter at PJ McGinnis.